Welcome to Mentor, a Siemens business here at SMT Hybrid Packaging. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Robert Huber. Uh, hello, Robert. Nice to see you. Hi. Good to see you. Okay. We're here to talk about the actual merger of the, uh, the or the acquisition of uh, Mentor by Siemens and what that has brought to the overall solution. Um, I think the first thing that, that, that uh, we look at, you always had a very good uh, DFM tool uh, with Mentor, but you've actually managed to achieve the holy grail. You've closed the loop with all these different applications to really feed back to the, the designer. Yes, that's right. So Mentor was acquired by Siemens and Mentor was always a leading company in the whole flow for electrical design to manufacturing. Yeah. So we have the design tool, schematics, layouting tool. We have a lot of validation tool on an electrical basis, being it the manufacturability of the boat, the assembly, the test, uh, signals and even thermal, whatever has to do with the boat. We went then on to the process engineering side, to the simulation, how can I merge the virtual product that I have now with the equipment on the shop floor and make sure the process using this equipment for these products is actually seamless and it works. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the planning on how much time this needs and so on. Mm -hmm. Going through the manufacturing of these boards so that at the end of the day a board comes out in a box build area. Right. Siemens on the other hand is very strong in the whole mechanical area. Starting from the design of the casing for a product or some gears or whatever it is, all the mechanical design. Also the mechanical validation on multiple aspects, whether it's force or heat or a position of something and so on. Going through the design of the line and machines and programming them and balancing them, the simulation of the whole factory, how can the material flow and so on, through the execution of the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. and a casing whatever comes in the box builder where you actually have to build everything together to a whole product. Mm -hmm. So while each of these individual pieces uh, can be, uh, we, we have some competitors out there that do something, we are the only one that brings really everything together and that's unique on the market. Yeah, absolutely, you take a very holistic view but in a detailed way. Um, you, I mean you literally cover from everything from the, the design uh, then into the digital twin uh, and carry that through um, and uh, uh, basically do all the virtual verification etc uh, through and look that back to the designer so the, the number of turns that factories typically take is like five to six before a product gets into production this should reduce it to lot size one that's exactly what we try to do. I mean, there is a trend going towards lot size one, mm. which has many implications. Aside from the change over time, that many people always think first, it is for me also, how much time do you have to ramp up to a quality product? You have one product, the first one has to be good. Right. Uh, there are other uh, implications. When you have lot size one, how many variations of products do you have? Lot size one doesn't mean you're producing less. Mm -hmm. No, you're just producing many more variants of the product. Right. So if you have thousands or millions of variants, how do you ensure at the end of the day everything fits together? You have to use the virtual twin to validate that at the end of the day everything fits together. So the key is also when you do this virtual twin, like we spoke about Mentor had this electrical flow and Siemens the uh, the mechanical flow. Yeah. If you don't link them together, you're still at the same place you were before. Of course. But now we have basically some tools that uh, you can design a casing with NX, transfer the outline to expedition, design the board, put components of it, give the output back to NX and make sure everything works. Yeah. And you go down to the next step to the whole validation of it, where you do the electrical validation, mechanical validation, the thermal validation, the signal validation, everything. So you're trying to really ensure at the end of the day, you will have a, a, a functioning product a when it's produced. Product, yeah. A manufacturing product and function products. You also do the process simulation then. Mm -hmm. You do the whole process preparation. You simulate machines, you simulate eventually the codes of the robots that you're doing before you actually use this code in a factory because what you want to do is you want to run the first product and everything runs smoothly. smoothly. Right. You have the first product is good out of the factory mm -hmm. and then you change to the next one because the next one is also lot size one or two yeah. or ten or five or whatever. Yeah. Now, you know, as, as, as we mentioned before, uh, one of the, the key things is you might uh, design this for a lot size one, um, but then 
uh, it goes down into the pick and place machine. Uh, it has a, a, a reel of components, goes on to, pick to, to, to the board, but then they run out. The operator replaces the boards, uh, the components, but it's a different vendor. He doesn't know it's a different vendor, but the size is just marginally different. Um, how does your system cope with this? Uh, that's a really realistic problem that many, many of our customers have it. Mm -hmm. We capture this in our DFM tool. Mm -hmm. Our DFM tool is actually downloading from the Valor Parts library, where there are millions of components, the physical dimension as an electronic data sheet, basically. Okay. You download it, mm -hmm. and each vendor has its own unique uh, length. While the electrical values may be identical, mm -hmm. physical values may be slightly different. Yeah. So we overlay the actual physical values for vendors on the pet design. Vendor A may be perfectly fitting, vendor B may be too big. If it's too big, you may have the risk of solder defects. Mm -hmm. So we detect this already and give reports up front mm -hmm. that tells you here you definitely will have failure, here you might have failures, here you're safe. Right. So we capture this all to make sure that uh, you have the awareness and make the right decisions which components to allow and which ones not. So, so, you, so you provide if you like a risk, a risk analysis to, to, to the operator and he makes a decision at the end of the day what to go with. Well in this case it's not to the operator itself, in this case it's basically still in the engineering side. You can even say this vendor is not allowed here or you can also go back to the engineering uh, the design and say you know what can you fix this pad so it also fits for this third vendor that I'm trying to get because the components are cheaper. Right. There's also another aspect when you have this. Let's, let's say we replace a connector. Mm -hmm. The pins fit perfectly in, but the holes are slightly different. What problem will you have? Okay, when you reach a box build, it doesn't fit anymore in the casing. Yeah. So in this case, we already connected our expedition with NX, transferring the information. NX can see what's happening here, can adjust the design of the casing, and when you go into the final assembly, everything works smoothly again. So it's all before you produce, you have to use the virtual twin, which is, in my opinion, the number one issue that we are having today mm -hmm. in manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, it's been an issue for many, many years, and many people have tried to, 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 fix, to fix this, and uh, I think this is obviously the way forward. One of the other things that um, really uh, is uh, outstanding about this whole presentation is that, uh, of course, Siemens uh, is not uh, just involved in the box build side, but you've also got your own MES system. Um, so you, you can provide the, the whole uh, solution for the factory. That's correct. So Siemens, for the electronics manufacturing, they use Chemstar. Now, Chemstar, I have to say, is the leading uh, MES system in other industries such as medical, like 13 out of 15 top uh, medical companies use Chemstar. But for electronics, they were not very successful. Why not? Because they didn't have the connectivity uh, until recently to the shop floor. Because there is no OPC UA in the SMT area. They are all the special interfaces. They have some requirements such as material management with a huge material traffic from machine to machine, back to the warehouse, half reused, has to be rebaked. And different complexity than other industry. Mm -hmm. So this, for the merger, Valor brings in this business logic and we have already released Chemstar as a first version for the electronics industry using our Valor IoT to bring in already all the data. Right? And this will be enriched with the Valor business logic for other products such as material management and so on where Valor was very strong. So we have basically a top of the class I mean, yes, for discrete industries, that works also in electronics. And many of our customers are really amazed because they don't want to have two MES systems. I use this one right. for electronics and this one for my mechanical side. No, they want to have one. And this is what we achieve right. in an excellent way and without compromises. Right. And this is, uh, I, I think, a real great opportunity for, for customers to get the right tool to harmonize the solution and to standardize on a solution for all their factories, mm -hmm. not just a part of them. No, I think it's, I think it's a really is a great solution. Now, a lot of the companies in this industry and machine vendors around here are gathering around different um, standards, you know, basically to cut down the, the, the programming time when they make sales of equipment. Um, so, if someone that are using that are going on to the the Hermes standard, uh, 
some uh, they're also using CFX as a, as a platform uh, and there's even a new one announced yesterday from from Jara in, in Japan uh, are these things that are you you're going to work with as well so that they integrate with your larger system here so the the CFX for instance mm. is a standard that's being developed right now mm. and it would make our life much much easier yeah. I mean we spend so much engineering hours mm -hmm. in connecting to machines. The problem is always, the connection itself is quite simple. Mm -hmm. Normalizing the data, making a right definition of what it is, is actually missing. I mean, if I just say, okay, you have to provide cycle time, as an example. Mm -hmm. One may say, okay, my cycle time, I define it from both in until both out. Right. The next one says, wait a minute, there's a lag between both in both out until the next one goes in, so I do both out to both out and things like this. So there's always slight differences. The next one says, you know what, let's get rid of this uh, of the transport time. Mm -hmm. Let's just do the cycle time when the head is, for instance, moving, so we look a little better on a display. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get those different systems with different data in and you want to see which one is the bottleneck, yeah. you may pinpoint to the wrong one. Yeah. So the standard itself, while it's good, what it really is missing, actually, and this is, I have not seen it being addressed yet, is a standard definition. That's the most critical portion of standardization. That's also the most challenging. Standard and definition for what? Of all the data there. You cannot just say, I mean, I used to work for a machine vendor, right? Pickup reliability, for instance, was always a uh, big topic. Because like, for instance, when the machine have the ability, you have a pickup error, then you try again, and after the third one, uh, you say the track is empty. Okay. How do you count this one? Mm -hmm. Some machine runners have said, okay, this were three pickup errors. Other ones said, no, this was zero pickup error. This is one track empty. Mm -hmm. So how, when you now compare pickup errors with one and the other one, one shows better results, but that may not be true. Mm -hmm. So if in order to make the real good decisions, you have to understand the meaning, you have to have normalized data that has the same meaning. Right. not just normalized data with the same name. There's a there's big always, difference. You're right, and there's always going to be variances, you yes. know. I mean, uh, and, and that, that issue exists with standards and it has done for years. I mean, look at, look at the, the, the board that's used uh, for measuring CPH at the moment. It's, it's, it's so old, it's a joke. <laughs> that, that's absolutely correct, right? Yeah. So uh, what, what's the meaning of this one? I mean, yeah. in general, when you're a customer, you want to understand my board, how yeah. much is it? I don't care about a theoretical CPH that you can never yeah. uh, produce in a real factory. Yeah. That, that, that's meaningless to me. Yeah. It uh, was at some point initial comparison, but yeah. it's... Yeah. No, I totally understand and I agree with you. Robert, we're running out of time. It's been a fascinating look around uh, uh, what, what the power of uh, Siemens and Mentor together are, are producing. Um, and we can go into a lot more detail uh, at other times in the future. But for now, thank you for joining me. Okay. Thanks for this opportunity.